Hi guys and welcome to the Vegetarian Hebridean Experience, a limited edition number. Grab yourself a glass of wine, get the tunes on and we'll get in amongst this box. Okay, for the starter, grab a heavy base saucepan. What you want to do is you want to bring that to a medium high heat. We are going to cook this fantastic potato terrine. So everything for this dish, what you need is you have your potato terrine, you have your pickled celeriac, your potato air bag it's called, but it's a puffed potato and a little bit of black garlic emulsion. These two, we keep to the side and we'll come back to later, okay? And this one as well, actually. So what you want to do is you want to feel the heat coming off the pan. Okay, don't put your hand in the pan, over the pan. Add a tiny touch of oil. Now gently layer it in, so you want to hear a sizzle. That's what you want to hear. Try and resist the temptation to move the pan a lot. The potato, although it's compacted, um, it's, it's actually quite fragile, so just treat it with a little bit of respect. What we want to do is you want to add a little bit of colour to it. Right, so what you want to do, that's it, caramelise. You want to just sear it on each side for about maybe two to three minutes on each side. Lovely, turn it over. If you are cooking this fully in the pan, what you do is you colour it on all sides. And you take your time, you warm it through, but it's a lot easier to cook this in the oven. So that's it. I'm going to just transfer this to a little tray. A little oven tray, and then warm that through the oven. That'll take between five and ten minutes in the oven there. But while the potatoes are in the oven, while the, your starter is cooking, you want to dress your plate, okay? You've got the beautiful little black garlic emulsion. What I'm going to do is I'm going to do a very chefy swipe on the plate, okay? So I've got this little fancy tool. You can use a paint scraper on the back of a knife, okay? I'm going to put the pickled celeriac into a little pan and spiral it around a pair of tweezers. You guys could use a fork, okay? So what I'm going to do, spiral it right round, all the way round, okay? And then just snip it at the ends of the fingers, okay? That makes a little three-star garnish, okay? The potato terrine is warm and wholesome. You can smell the cheese. What I'm going to do, because I'm only serving it for one, that is a big portion of potato and cheese for one person, and especially for a starter, I'm going to portion that right down. I'm also going to show you another little chefy trick. You don't have to do these, you can enjoy all of this on, it, on your own, you don't have to do all these little tricks, but if you do, and I'm always here to help. So I'm just using a little knife. I'm going to just portion that down, okay, to show off the sides of the terrine. You see? Lovely little layers of the terrine and there's cheese right all the way through, okay? Beautiful stuff. So I'm going to use the rest of that black garlic emulsion. I'm going to paint. We are painters, we are artists. We are going to paint the top of there, okay? Why are we doing that? Not only does that act like a seasoning on top of the potato, not only does it complement the rest of the dish, it acts as glue for when we add our beautiful puffed potato. Look at that. <laughs> Look at that. Now that is a proper starter. A proper chefy starter that everyone will be impressed with. There you go. So there we have an outstanding vegetarian starter. You have your potato terrine with the stornaby cheddar right through it, black garlic emulsion, crispy potato, and your pickled celeriac. It's a real celebration of Scotland right there. Enjoy. On to the main event, okay? We know that vegetarians are often let down when it comes to the main course. We will not let you down, we promise you that. We have an outstanding main course. We have this lovely vegetarian Wellington, okay? Now you've heard of vegetarian Wellington's already, but this, this is a new number. We have salt baked beetroot in the inside, outstanding. We have surrounded that with a vegetarian haggis, fantastic. And then surrounded again with pastry, okay? Puff pastry, of course. Egg washed and glazed. So what you want to do here is you want to place the Wellington straight on to your, your parchment paper and onto a tray. And you want to put it into a preheated oven. The, my oven is set at 180 degrees, okay? I'm going to check that at 25 minutes. It probably takes between 25 and 35 minutes to cook. 
keep an eye on it, see when the pastry goes all golden, okay, and that should be hot through. Okay, while the um, Wellington is in the oven and cooking through, we're going to just simply warm through the mustard sauce, okay? This goes on to a very, very gentle heat, okay? You don't want to, you don't want to burn it, okay? So, I'm not going to put it on right now because the Wellington's about 25 minutes away. What I'm going to do is I'm going to wait until nearer the time and it just takes about five minutes at a very gentle heat just to warm through, okay? Right, okay, we are ready to take our Wellington out of the oven. I can see that the puff pastry is golden. I know that it's hot through uh, and we're ready to carve it and present it. So I've started to warm up the sauce just very, 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 very gently. It's turned from quite a solid state to quite a wet state and that's what we're after. Just very, very slowly warming that through. Okay, take the beautiful golden puff pastry out of the oven. Let's decant it on to your worktop. When we take out the Wellington from the oven, it's important to rest it just for a couple of minutes. Okay, while you're doing that, okay, keep a wee eye on your sauce. And that's, that's what the sauce should be. That's the consistency. You're not looking to boil the sauce. Okay, and then we're going to place the sauce onto the plate before we carve. Look at that. Through the sauce, you've got that mustard, that outstanding mustard. Chives. Oh, look at that. That's, that really is a nice sauce. That is, uh, that's impressing me. What we're going to do here is we're going to carve this into two slices. To make it extra special, I'm going to trim off the edges. They're totally edible. Keep them to the side. Carve this off. Carve the edges off. Keep them to the side. Okay? I'm going to carve this into two slices. Carve it there. Okay? And then straight down the middle. That's with a nice, sharp, serrated knife. And that's what you're after there. Look at that. Look at that. That is not bad at all. And stand it up nice and high so that everyone can see the different layers, your salt baked beetroot, the vegetarian haggis, and that golden puff pastry. So there you have your vegetarian haggis Wellington. Enjoy. All right guys, we have these from two fantastic sides. So first of all, we've got a nice warm potato salad. We've designed it so that you can cook them both at the same time. With the potato salad, you have two sauces with both of these, so keep them to the side for now, we're not cooking with them. Remove the potato salad from your container. So what we're going to do, we're going to place them onto a tray, we're just warming this through, okay? Everything on this is already cooked, you could, you could essentially serve this um, chilled, I'm going to warm this through. Okay, a very Scottish potato salad there. The second side, which can go onto the same tray, we're going to open it up, okay? This one is roasted Jerusalem artichokes. What we want to do is we want to remove these nuts before we cook. They've already been candied. You don't want to, you don't want to, cook, them, to cook them too much. Okay, simply transfer onto the tray there. Okay, and we're going to warm them right through. Okay, what we want to do is we want to place this into the oven uh, for between 15 to 18 minutes, okay? Both will be ready at the same time. Okay, so your side dishes will be ready. And I'm going to take them out of the oven. Okay. I'm going to plate these up one at a time. We're going to start with the Jerusalem artichoke. Okay, the sweet, juicy, nutty Jerusalem artichoke. With the Jerusalem artichokes, it's very. So I like to do the blue cheese on the bottom, and then use the back of my spoon in a circular motion, as so, and then plate your Jerusalem artichokes on top of the blue cheese. Okay, they've been roasted, they're all gnarly, sweet and roasted. It's an outstanding vegetable, you really need to try this if you haven't tried them. It's full of goodness. Okay, beautiful stuff. And these get topped with a little bit more of the blue cheese dressing. Just a little bit, a wee tiny bit. So that in every bite, when you take it, you get a little bit of the blue cheese. And you get a little bit of the artichoke. And hopefully, these little crunchy bits of delight. A little candied walnuts, which are outstanding. And that's, that's, what a, that's what a side dish should be. It should really celebrate the vegetable. The walnuts, the blue cheese, the, the artichokes, they all go. Side dishes are often forgotten about, they're not here at home on MX. Okay guys, so there is your Jerusalem artichokes. A warm, sweet roasted Jerusalem artichokes with candied walnuts and a blue cheese royale. Enjoy. 
Now for a cheeky potato salad, but not like you've seen it before, okay? I'm gonna use a pan um, to, to mix this through. Okay, so you have your potatoes, they're all warm. You got your, your pickled swede, your sibies, and your potatoes, all toasty toasty. Okay, when you have your warm roux dressing, big spoonful of that, right in there, and when the dressing makes contact with the warm potatoes, it unleashes all those flavours. It fills the room with a heady aroma of saffron and the garlic. It also starts to melt, and you'll see it start to dress the potatoes. You've got some pickled sweet through there, you've got some uh, chard um, spring onions. Okay. Just pile it high. Pile it high, make sure they're all dressed, they're all well seasoned. So there you have your warm potato salad, dressed in a uh, garlic roux. Enjoy. So here we have our fantastic Loch Arthur cheddar that we took out an hour before cooking. It came to room temperature and it's released all those dormant flavours. So all we need to do for this is simply open it and then we're going to just plate it on the plate. Okay? We had to include a cheese when celebrating Scotland. Okay, and we have right here a pickle. It's uh, very similar to a pickle that you've tried before, but we have made this using, again, root veg that we grow so well in Scotland because there's so much rain. All that's left to do here is to serve this fantastic house-made relish on the side. Enjoy. For the dessert, it cannot be simpler. Simply remove the lid and, and serve. What we have here is a cheeky tipsy layer with whiskey in it. Okay, on the base layer we have sea buckthorn, which is an incredibly antioxidant berry that grows in our shorelines. A fantastic whiskey cream, and on top, toasted almonds and stem ginger and enjoy. So there you have the Hebrides vegetarian menu from Home by Nico. Enjoy.